Are AI models like ChatGPT actually smart? Or are they just masterful BS artists? A bombshell study from Apple claims these AI geniuses might just be glorified parrots, mimicking patterns instead of actually reasoning. This changes everything, and I'm breaking it all down right here, right now. And I genuinely think this could change everything. Seriously. Everything. The reason I'm so hyped about this is because of what this research is currently suggesting. So I'm going to break it all down for you, because this is, without a doubt, one of the biggest papers to come out recently. And it's fundamentally quite surprising. Alright, so essentially, Apple Research has come out with this paper called GSM Symbolic, Understanding the Limitations of Mathematical Reasoning in Large Language Models. Okay, that's a mouthful. But the short summary of what this paper is suggesting is this. They hypothesize that current large language models, or LLMS, aren't capable of genuine logical reasoning. Instead, they attempt to replicate the reasoning steps they've observed in their training data. So basically, this paper is throwing shade, saying that models like GPT-4, Claude 3.5, Sonnet, that these models aren't as smart as we think they are. They're not reasoning through any kind of problem. The only thing they're doing, according to Apple, is just statistical pattern matching, which means these models are simply not as intelligent as we once thought, and that would have severe implications for certain things moving forward. Now the research dives into a few things, which I'm going to explain, and it's actually pretty simple to understand. So let's get into why this is really impactful. One of the things that we used to do, and still do, to assess how models score on their reasoning, or essentially assess how smart these models are, is by using benchmarks, okay? And one of those benchmarks is called the GSM8K. This stands for Grade School Mathematics 8000, which is, as the name suggests, 8000 grade school math questions. The Apple researchers point out something really interesting here. They say that when OpenAI released GSM8K three years ago, GPT-3, one of the first iterations of the GPT series models, scored 35% on the GSM8K test. But today? Today's models, even the smaller ones with only 3 billion parameters, are surpassing 85%, and the large ones are hitting 95%. Okay, that sounds incredible, right? Huge progress. But here's the kicker. The researchers argue, has reasoning really improved? Like, how much of this is genuine, logical, symbolic reasoning versus pattern recognition or, and this is a big one, inadvertent data contamination or overfitting? So basically what they're saying is, look, the smaller models like GPT-3, which had 175 billion parameters, scored 35%, and now tiny models, just 3 billion parameters, are scoring over 85% and the big guys are hitting 95%, we've made incredible progress in a short space of time, sure, but we need to figure out how much of this reasoning has actually improved versus how much is just, well, cheating in a way. Data contamination basically means that the data we use to train these models, you know, more parameters, more data, that some of that data, unfortunately, from the test sets and the answers, has slipped into the training data. So the model essentially remembers what it was trained on and isn't actually getting smarter. It's just regurgitating. And then there's pattern recognition. How much of this improvement is just the model recognizing patterns in the questions and spitting out the answers it's seen before? So let me show you something. Pulls up graph on screen. We can see this graph here, which shows us the GPT-3 models from 2021. And then we can see these state-of-the-art models in 2024. And we can see that the GSM-8K accuracy is just going up completely. It's continuing to climb, right? looks amazing. But this is where this Apple team of researchers decided, okay, if we really want to test if these models are actually increasing their reasoning abilities, we need a new benchmark. And this new benchmark they've come up with is a little bit different. Okay, and it's literally just a little bit different. What it does is it changes things ever so slightly. They call it GSM Symbolic. They say, introducing GSM Symbolic, a new tool to test the limits of LLMS in mathematical reasoning. We create symbolic templates from the GSM-8K test set, enabling the generation of numerous instances and the design of controllable experiments. We generate 50 unique GSM symbolic sets, essentially like GSM-8K examples, but with different values and names. So all they did was take the test set, the GSM-8K, they took a few of those questions, and they changed the values and the names. So in math questions, you know, you might have, Jimmy has five apples. What they did was... They said, okay, I'm going to change the names. So from Jimmy, it's going to be John. And from apples, it could be oranges. And from six oranges, it could be seven oranges. They changed the values and the names. And if these models are truly capable of reasoning, they should be able to handle these problems just fine, right? As long as we've just changed the names and the numbers, not the actual problem itself, 
So essentially, you can see right here, shows image comparison. This is the GSM8K on the left-hand side. We can see that the values that are going to be changed are located here. We can see Sophie, then a nephew. Then we can see 31, 8, 9, then Sophie, nephew, 62. So those are the only values that are going to be changed. And you can see right here that the GSM symbolic template, of course, the name, it has the family, the total, and you can see it changes these within a certain range. And this is how the template is constructed. Now, it's important that you understand that all they've done is just change the names and the values. But the crazy thing about this was that when they changed the names and the values, there was a huge discrepancy in the results. A massive difference between what the models claimed to have scored from various research labs versus what they actually tested and got on the GSM symbolic test. They say here, current accuracies on the GSM-8K are not reliable. We observe a large performance variation. For example, Llama 88B scores anywhere between 70% to 80%, 53 scores between 75% and 90%, and so on. And for most models, the average performance on the GSM symbolic, which is just a variation of a test they already took, with different names and different values, is lower than the GSM-8K. We can see here shows another graph that there's quite the discrepancy between the reported values and then the actual values on the GSM symbolic test, which is surprising, to say the least. And we can see that the actual test results are in the dashed line. So if you want to look at what these models actually got, we can see that here in the dashed line. Then we can see the variations of what these models claim to get, which is between 90% to 98%, then 70% to 80%. Then from here, this one looks like from 70% to 85%. So they're starting to question, why on earth is there such a giant discrepancy in these models' results, purely based on the fact that the only thing that's been changed is the names and the values. And this is a bigger chart, shows larger graph, and we can see that some of the models that have the largest drop are Falcon 2, Gemma 2, and some of these other models. And it seems that these smaller models are going to be the ones that probably have a lot more overfitting, a lot more data contamination, amongst other things. So we can see right here that the researchers are stating that the fragility of supposed LLM reasoning is real. LLMS remains sensitive to changes in proper names, for example, the people, the foods, the objects, and even more so when numbers are altered. And they basically ask here, would a grade school student's math test score vary by 10% if we only changed the names? And I think it wouldn't. Like, if you gave someone a test and you only changed the names, would the outcome of a mathematical-based question change by 10%? I don't think so, considering it's just a name, which could mean, potentially, that these LLMS are simply memorizing things or doing pattern recognition. And this is not good, because if this is true, it would mean that these models aren't as smart as we think, and it might mean that we need better architectures for solving the reasoning issue. So this is something that is quite surprising because it means that these models are getting confused once these names are being changed. It doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. Now, we also have something where the researchers decided, okay, what if we adjust the question difficulty? We're going to introduce three new variants of the GSM symbolic to study model behavior. Removing one clause, GSMM1, and adding one clause or adding two clauses. Basically, it's just the GSM symbolic, which is just one change, and then the GSM symbolic dash P1, which is an increase in difficulty, and GSM symbolic dash P2, which is, you know, another increase in difficulty. Now, of course, this specific result I don't think is too bad because, of course, as you increase the difficulty, the model's performance should go down, and this is what we do experience here. But the difficulty doesn't seem to be that much harder, yet there are really large drops in performance, which does beg the question. Are these models truly understanding what's going on? Because there are just a few difficulties added, and there's such a large drop-off. We can see that, of course, the O1 models do seem to perform a little bit stronger, but... On other models, like gpt 4 and gpt 4 Mini, there are a lot bigger drops. Now, this is where the research starts to get really crazy, and I start to question whether or not these models truly understand what's going on. Because the researchers decided to do something even crazier. Okay, so this is where they state this. This begs the question, do these models truly understand the mathematical concepts? Introducing the GSM noob. We add a single clause that seems relevant but doesn't contribute to the overall reasoning, hence noob. So basically, what they've decided to do here was to take these traditional GSM 8K exam questions, but what they did was they added something that wasn't relevant to the question really at all. We've got one example here, and you're going to see the results of this, which are pretty crazy. So it says, Oliver picks 44 Kiwis on Friday. He then picks 58 Kiwis on Saturday. On Sunday, he picks double the number of Kiwis he did on Friday, but five of them were a bit smaller than average. How many Kiwis does Oliver have? Now, a statement like, but five of them were a bit smaller than average, doesn't impact the number of Kiwis that you have. Like, it literally doesn't impact that, you know, the math. 
the math at all, okay? It doesn't matter if it's bigger or if it's smaller, a kiwi is still a kiwi. And the crazy thing about this is that they say, we added seemingly relevant statements to the questions that are in fact irrelevant to the reasoning and conclusion. However, the majority of models fail to ignore these statements and then blindly convert them into operations, leading to mistakes. Okay, so what these models will do is they'll be like, okay, if five of them are smaller than average, and then they get really, really confused where they should just disregard that because it's not relevant. But take a look at the performance drops on models when this is done. The performance drop is just, I mean, this is insane. Like, this is incredible. You've got a, you know, the GSM-8K, if we look at the gsm noop accuracy, the performance drop is around, even on O1 preview, the Orion model that we think is probably the best model that currently exists, there's a 17.7% .7 drop in the GSM-8K to the gsm noop accuracy, which is pretty outstanding. And the reason I say, and the reason I highlight the O1 preview model, which is this model right here, is because this is the model that is supposed to have the best reasoning capabilities. There shouldn't be such a large slope here, because what we have is a consistent drop in performance across the models, despite these benchmarks having irrelevant questions. What we should see, if O1 preview is as good at reasoning as OpenEye claims, is this bar should be, you know, up here. Because these models are supposed to work through the problem step by step in order to get to the final solution. I'm not sure how OpenEye trained O1. There's a lot there's a lot of secrecy behind it, but I mean if a model drops its reasoning capabilities 44%, 32% for GPT-40 when seemingly irrelevant information is added, I think this is absolutely remarkable. Because how many times have we added data to a problem to chat GPT to GPT-40? We've provided it with so much context, and sometimes arguably some of that context is completely irrelevant. And I mean, a 30 to 40% drop in terms of the reasoning output. I mean, that's pretty awful. Like, that's pretty bad. Like, there's no way to put this other than this is a truly shocking find, in my honest opinion. Because I wouldn't have thought that adding such irrelevant statements would have resulted in such a large performance drop. And what's crazy about this is that we see a similar performance drop for GPT-4 O to O 1 dash mini. We can see O1 mini's drop is at 29% and GPT-4O's is at 32%. O1 preview does do better at 17.5%, but I wouldn't be expecting that big of a drop for a model that is specifically trained to reason, okay? And we can see the other open source models here. You know, a lot of these other models are pretty smaller, but I am glad that they did include the O1 series of models because that would have been a glaringly obvious thing to do considering it's just trained on reasoning. So the craziest thing about this, which is why I said that this could genuinely fundamentally change everything, is because the researchers say here, can data, models, or compute fundamentally solve this? We don't think so. They state that scaling data, models, or compute cannot fundamentally solve this issue, okay? It says the OpenAI O1 series is performing better, but still suffers from slight performance variations. And O1 preview shows significant improvements, but it still suffers from silly mistakes like this. Okay, you can see that this problem just blindly applies the inflation rate. So the question is, Liam wants to buy some school supplies. He buys some erasers that now cost $6.75 each, 10 notebooks that now cost $11 each, and a ream of bond paper that now costs $19. How much should Liam pay now? And then it adds this little bit at the end. Assuming that due to inflation, prices were 10% cheaper last year. When you read this question, you have to disregard the fact that due to inflation, prices were 10% cheaper last year because Liam is buying this stuff now. So this bit right here, you just completely disregard that, okay? Most humans who look at this kind of problem are going to completely understand that because you're going to be thinking, wait a minute, why would I look at inflation last year, okay? Disregard that. How much does everything cost now? And then you answer the question. So of course, we can see here that, you know, when this model is doing the reasoning, we can see that it says step one. Calculate last year's prices after reducing the current price by 10%, which is just not what you would do at all. You're not even supposed to do this step. So the model completely gets this wrong. And the question is, is that if these models were actually good at reasoning, if they truly understood what was going on, would they make such simple mistakes? The researchers then go on to state that understanding Elm's true reasoning capabilities is crucial for deploying them in real-world scenarios where accuracy and consistency are non-negotiable especially in AI safety, alignment, education, healthcare, and decision-making systems. And that is truly important. If you are going to be saying that, okay, we're going to get to AGI, we're going to be potentially deploying this kind of technology worldwide, we need to make sure that a simple input into a prompt cannot throw off the model by 17% to, you know, even up to like 40% in some cases. You have to understand that one of the reasons that these models aren't used in certain environments is because there are certain applications where the degree of accuracy that you need to have is very close to 
very close to 100%. And anything that deviates from that is going to result in a catastrophic impact. For example, the amount of planes that go down, I think it's like, it's ridiculous, okay? Like, the failure rate for certain parts is insane. And the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that we can't have models that fail in, you know, a significant percentage of scenarios if something is added to the end of a prompt, which the model cannot distinguish if it's relevant or not, okay? And I think that's really important to understand because now we can understand, okay, if this is the case, maybe we're not going to, you know, put AI in certain areas like math or certain reasoning areas because it fundamentally doesn't understand some of these issues. So they go on to state that developing models that move beyond pattern recognition to true logical reasoning is the next big challenge for AI. So the reason that this is crazy is because this could be a massive setback for AI. If this paper has essentially proved that these models aren't capable of reasoning, it would somehow mean that OpenAI's recent series of O1 models just simply aren't that good. And I know that that might come as a huge surprise, but it might mean that potentially these models are just simply bigger, which means they have more data, and potentially more data contamination. Now, now they also say that, of course, overall they found zero evidence, okay? And that's an insane statement. We found no evidence of formal reasoning in language models, including open source models like Llama, Phi, Gemma, and Mistral, and, of course, leading closed models like gpt 4 and the O1 series. So even though it seems that maybe we were, you know, actually doing an off-ramp, it seems that now we can see that, okay, if there's such a big discrepancy, we need to figure out how we can solve this. So let me know what you guys think about this research from Apple. I thought this was absolutely crazy. Let me know what your comments down below are. Do you think these models are reasoners? Do you use them to solve your reasoning problems? And I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'll catch you in the next video.